Welcome back to Smitty's Learning Room. Today we're going to continue with Core 2 and having a look at factors affecting performance and having a look at strength training. So if we have a look at the syllabus here, we know that this comes from how does training affect performance and we know that it comes from that second dot point types of training and training methods and having a look at strength training. Now strength training is usually uh, comes under the umbrella term of resistance training rather than aerobic training. While there are aerobic gains that can occur from strength training, most of the time it's with resistance training. So there's a few things about strength training that we need to understand or to remember from um, last year before we can move on and actually have a look at the specific types of strength training. Now when undertaking strength training, um, the athlete must be really clear on what aspect they're trying to work on, whether they're working on muscular power, muscular endurance or muscular strength, and then have a look at how these things here, the number of sets and maximum reps, the speed of the contractions and the types of exercises to be completed. Um, to have a look at whether they're going to be building power, endurance or strength. Now remember that we have three different types of contractions that we can use when we're training for strength and this is what we learnt last year in year 11. So we have isometric contractions and remember they're the ones that occur when the tension is generated in the muscle um, as it attempts to overcome a load but there's no shortening or um, of the muscle. So for example pushing against um, uh, a wall is an example of an isometric contraction. An isotonic contraction occurs when um, for the muscle to overcome the load, the muscle must shorten, for example, a bicep curl. And then our isokinetic contractions is when the muscle um, shortens at a constant rate. For example, when using hydro gym equipment, so looking at hydraulic weights. So when we look at strength training, we have three different types of strength training. We've got free or fixed weights, elastic weights, and hydraulic weights. And some people will use a combination of all three types of strength training, but as you'll find out later on, each um, different type of training is quite specific to muscle groups or to sports types or availability of equipment. When we have a look at athletes who want to build muscular strength, um, they'll have a look at focusing on heavy loads with lower reps of one to six reps maximum. So that's for building muscular strength for sports such as like weightlifting or shot put. When we look at uh, muscular endurance for sports such as say long distance running or cycling, it's usually trained using a lower load with higher repetitions. So more than 15 repetitions max per set with a lower weight. Then we have a look at muscular power. So for athletes like a 100 metre runner or a long jumper, um, this requires athletes to exert force quickly. So therefore the training that they have to do is a little bit different and their load and their repetition is somewhere between muscular strength and muscular endurance, but their movements need to be quick and explosive movements. So movements like plyometrics. When we have a look at free or fixed weights, these are the weights that you're most likely to find in say your school gym or even a small local gym. And this type of training is suitable for all sports which involve strength, power or speed. And the advantage of these, this style of training is it allows for multiple muscle groups to be targeted within the one exercise. Um, or you can actually just identify specific muscles and work on that if they're free weights. You'll find now though that personal trainers are trying to actually combine muscle groups so that the, train, the athlete is getting as much out of the session as they possibly can. Um, now the exercises in relation to free or fixed weights are generally developed to try and mimic sport specific movements. So for example, um, a cyclist will spend more time um, doing weights that are based around the lower half of their body than what they will say up on the upper half in the shoulders and the arms and they can do this using those free or fixed weights. When we have a look at elastic weights this is something a little bit different again and it's suitable for all athletes but in particular those recovering from injury 
all those who are traveling or have access to very little uh, gym equipment. And um, the reason for this is that they're, they're really portable and affordable and easy to use. And sometimes it's just a case of using um, a, quite a large piece of elastic obtained from the physio or the gym. And um, it's great for training for very specific muscles and movements, hence why it's a really good option for athletes recovering from injury to assist in rehabilitation. So elastic weights are usually in the form of resistance bands, um, which is like a big rubber band or just a piece of really stretchy, um, quite thick elastic. Um, some people may even use a towel if they don't have access to these elastic weights at the time. Then we have a look at hydraulic weight training. Um, these are really common amongst sports like swimmers who have consistent movements uh, throughout the time of their event. And it, hydraulic weight training can provide for consistent resistance through the full range of movement. So obviously a sport like swimming or cycling where they need to apply the same amount of resistance um, this is where hydraulic weights come in handy because it actually makes sure that that resistance is set at the same amount of time and it allows for the training to mimic the resistance experienced in competition. So when we're summing up strength training, we need to have a look at the fact that um, when we're trying to build muscular strength, our um, repetitions are generally lower, so one to six reps per set, and we're working with heavier loads. And then obviously in alternate to that, we have muscular endurance where we have a lighter load um, performed at a high repetition. So generally more than 15 repetitions. And then looking at muscular power, our repetitions have to be performed quite quickly so that force needs to be performed quickly. So therefore it's somewhere in between the load and repetitions of muscular strength and muscular endurance. You need to make sure that you understand that there are three types of strength training, so free or fixed weights, elastic weights and hydraulic weights, and be able to connect these to different sports and why they can be used for those specific sports.